Hi, I'm Zena Garrison, and you listen to Brava is on Tennis. Yo, 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 what's up, everybody? This is your boy, Isaac. And this is your boy, Bryce. And we are Brothers on Tennis. And folks, we've got another good week of tennis discussion for you. We are in the middle portion of the Miami Open. And Bryce, I tell you what, man, there has been some really interesting tennis that has been happening down in in Florida, man. Have you been checking it out? I absolutely have. I mean, you know, we talked about it. I think last week or whatever, when we said that, you know, the media was starting to kind of create this picture, this narrative that, okay, the big three aren't there, team isn't there, Serena isn't there, you know, should they have just canceled the Miami (laughs) Open? And the answer is absolutely not. Are you kidding me? Almost everybody else is there, uh, minus what maybe Stan Vavrinka and and somebody else. But, yeah, this this has felt almost like Grand Slam tennis to me. I completely agree, man. I think that there have been just some incredible matchups and, and we're in for some doozies, you know, uh, that are that are going to be coming up here. So we've got a lot to look forward to. And then speaking of things to look forward to, the Locker Room app is something that we should all be looking forward to. If you are not on the Locker Room app, if you're listening to this, listening to this as a podcast, uh, folks, you need to get on that Locker Room app. So if you do have some type of an Apple product, you can get into Locker Room and you can come hang out with us. You can talk to talk with tennis, uh, with Brothers on Tennis here. They do have other uh, rooms and things that you can uh, get involved with, basketball, uh, lots of lots going on in that space as well. But again, if you are a sports fan, don't forget about Locker Room. This is the place to be as it relates to talking sports. So I want to make sure we throw that in there. So folks know know that uh, we are representing locker room at its best. So yeah. So and 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 let's so let's start talking about the tournament, right? And let's let's yes. start talking about it even beyond the playing. All so right. we know that James Blake is the tournament director yes. of Miami, and so it's always cool when you have you know an ex player. Uh, that's a tournament director because they obviously know from a player's perspective the things that the players are looking for at the tournaments. Uh, we know that there were several kind of decisions that had to be made so that the Miami Open could be held safely. Uh, it seems like they've done that. And, uh, you know, kudos to James and to everyone that was working with him in terms of of getting the tournament going. But I I wanted to mention all that to say, I'm once again disappointed Mm -hmm. that we've had people out there, specifically, you know, John Isner, who has come out and has made comments that, well, you know, the, the prize money has been reduced so much, and we know it's been reduced because of the lack of ticket sales and stuff like that, but you know maybe we should have had the tournament and and, all. and it it seems <laughs> like some of these players still don't understand do you do you get that it's good that you can play at all exactly exactly I mean, you know there was a period there where there were no tournaments going on it wasn't about a reduced prize fund it wasn't about you know you're still getting the same number of points you weren't being able to play. At all. At and all. so because people have worked hard to come up with so- solutions and so- scenarios mm-hmm. uh, so that people can play, they can play safely, they can make a few dollars, they can earn points, the tours can continue. Uh, you know, I guess everybody is, is you know, they they have a right to their opinion, but it just it just seems like it makes them for me, it makes them come across as being really, really entitled. It, and and exactly. just not being clued in on the reality of what really is going on in the world right now. I, yeah, I completely agree with you, Bryce. I don't understand how anyone could really be, you know, talking about prize money and, and, and talking about, hey, maybe we shouldn't have had XYZ tournament. It's like, no. I mean, the – I, I, it, it just doesn't make any sense to me, to be very honest with you. But um, again, it reeks of privilege. It reeks of, you know, entitlement. <laughs> um, right. And and I just it's it's just very disappointing that, um, you know, 
that we have people talking like that, especially our top ranked American. Um, that that's just, that's just very disappointing uh, to hear, to say the least. Right, right. <laughs> and I, I don't know. I just I guess I've been just as frustrated, you know. In this last week, um, did we? I don't even know if we talked about this last week, but you know, Sloan Stevens mm-hmm. had a birthday. Yes. Right. Yes. And, and so the USTA, the United States Tennis Association the head governing body for tennis in the United States, whose premier tournament every year is what? The U.S. Open. (laughs) Right. (laughs) They sent out a message on Twitter, on social media, you know, saying happy birthday to Sloane Stevens, a 2016 U.S. Open finalist. Right, right. Now, for those of you that just may not be up to speed on everything, Sloane Stevens not only was not a finalist at the U.S. Open in 2016, but she was actually the champion of the U.S. <laughs> Open in 2017. 17. That's right. So I could understand maybe if there was some small media outlet in, you know, Costa Rica <laughs> that got it wrong. <laughs> you, you know what I'm saying? But right, this is the, right. This is the U.S. <laughs> TA. Yep. During a time when, you know, things about, you know, people of color being slighted is, you know, people have Mm -hmm. heightened senses about that right now. Right. How do you not get that right? Yeah. Yeah. I, I, I completely agree. I don't understand how something like that can, can, slide through it just doesn't make sense to me that you could get it wrong like twice and (laughs) you know what i mean and that there's no one you know fact checking i mean i just it doesn't make any sense to me whatsoever i guess we should be happy that they at least recognized her birthday um maybe i you know but i guess if i was was sloan stevens i would be offended that the usta didn't remember that I won in 2017. <laughs> You're giving me props for being a finalist in 2016 when I wasn't even a finalist that exactly. year. Exactly. Wasn't exactly. Not at all. It's so it 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 shows very poorly on whoever uh uh did that. And I know that they they promptly removed it after uh getting a bit of feedback on it, but still it doesn't uh it doesn't make up for the fact that you that they allowed that to slide through and to make such an you know egregious uh error. Right. <laughs> so uh anyway, well we're gonna get off of the complaint train. Yeah. And, <laughs> and, and we're gonna talk about some of this great tennis that's been happening down in in Miami. And yes. you know, Isaac, you wanna start with the men or the women? Um, let's start with the men this time. We typically I'm like ladies first, but let's go ahead and start with the men this time. Okay. Well, for the men, we're kind of um we're one slot away right now from having the final 16 determined. Mm-hmm. Uh, mm-hmm. The final slot right now, it looks like it's going to probably be CeCe Paz because he's up 4-1 on Nishikori in the third set right now. Right. Um, but let's start at the top of, of the draw for the men, and we'll start off with the new number two in the world. That's right. Medvedev. Yes. How is he still in this tournament, Bryce? Please, please. <laughs> Help me understand that because Poprin had him dead to rights. That boy could barely move. And, that, and, oh, my goodness. Yeah, go ahead. Sorry. Yeah, no, I was going <laughs> to say, you know, that's where we see the steel or the metal of, of a champion. Right, right. You know, and I got concerned initially because I did not know that they were cramps. Right. Oh, yeah. Yeah. So so I was like, I hope he didn't pull something. I, I hoped it wasn't something that he couldn't recover from. So mm-hmm. I was very relieved to find out that it was cramps. But still, he could barely move. And the way the fact that he still pulled out that match, you got to give Medvedev a lot of credit. Oh, yeah. Yeah. I mean, the, he got a break late in that third set. Um, and, and like I said, I was looking at him like, there is no way he's going to be able to hold this break. And he, sure enough, he, he got out there and just started popping serves. And what was, 
what was so curious to me, and I guess this is just one of those brain cramps that you have when you're a younger player. Um, Popperin to me didn't adjust. I feel like he should have been, his goal should have been to get balls in play, just mm-hmm. get the serve back in play versus trying to actually, you know, hit an aggressive shot. No, just get it back into play. He can barely move. Just get the ball in play and start a rally because, again, he's either going to swat at it or, you know, or or it's something, you know, it'll put him in a better position to be able to win the point. And he made so many errors off of his off of the return to serve. It was amazing. Those last two games, I was like, young man, what are you doing? (laughs) <laughs> right. And you know, and we and we've seen this a million times, right? That right. may be the match that propels Medvedev to take this whole title. Oh, I agree. I absolutely I yeah, I still have him as winning this thing, absolutely. Um but at the same time while I was saying that while I'm kind of uh, putting this, putting some shade on Popperin, I have to say I like that young man. I like I like his game. And the fact that, you know, he stole on uh, Feliciano Lopez as well as uh, uh, Riley Opelka uh, to get to that round, it's very impressive, man. I, I think he's – yeah, he's, he's got some he's, – he's working with some stuff. He is. And, and, and Medvedev, for his efforts, in the next round gets surprisingly Francis Tiafo. And How about look, that? I know we've been busted on him a little bit recently, mm-hmm. but in this tournament, I mean – I don't, I don't know that we were 100% confident that he was going to get out of the first round Correct. against Trevalia. Correct. And uh, he got a three-set win there. He had a quality three-set win over Daniel Evans. Yes. And, you know, after taking a breadstick <laughs> right. from Larvich <laughs> to come right. back and to win that match 7-5-6-3 last night, mm-hmm. very impressive. I have to, I agree with you, bro. I mean, and I agree with you as well, as far as, you know, we've been kind of on Tiafo's back, like, yo, what's, what's wrong with you, man? You ain't pulling out these matches. You should be winning. Um, and I feel like maybe it was just a matter of the, you know, matter of him getting those, you know, those, you know, those reps, if you will, to be able to now show out in a, in a 1000, which is where it really counts, you know, because right. the fact that he is, you know, pretty much almost uh well, I mean, he has played Medvedev, but the fact that he's in the round of sixteen at a, at a at a you know a Master Series is very impressive. It's a, that's a very nice result. It is a nice result, and based upon what you just said, I'm assuming we're on the same page that you know he can start souvenir shopping after tomorrow. <laughs> I would, uh, you know, because it's exactly like you said. I think Medvedev realizes he got he got away with one and because he literally he should not have gotten out of that match with Popperin. And the fact that he did makes him that much more dangerous to take this title. So, yeah, unfortunately, I, I do see him taking out Francis uh, when they when they do meet up. So, yeah, you're you're spot on, brother. All right. <laughs> so let's let's go down to the next matchup. And the first person we have is John Isner, who mm-hmm. let, let me be clear now, you know, he I felt like he snuck out of that match with Mackie McDonald. Yes. And I was hoping that FAA was going to take him out, but he actually mm. beat him in two tiebreakers again. Yeah. And, and we were talking about this last week, and this was my fear. I don't feel like FAA has kind of that return game that gets enough balls back into play with John Isner. And mm-hmm. And I just I just feel like he doesn't read the serve that great. So, I, you know, I, I, I just felt like it was going to be tough for him to break serve. And if you, you know, and if you're constantly going tie breaks with John Isner, that's that's not a good sign. No, that's not a good strategy. <laughs> that's no. not a good strategy. And um, and and sure enough, that's that's kind of what what came to fruition. So. Um, yeah, it was kind of disappointing to see uh, Felix go out in straight sets, but you know, actually, you know, it was a relatively quality match, though. But again, when when you get to a tiebreaker, you can't you can't make mistakes, especially against someone that has a serve like John Isner. And simply put, that's and it's not that Felix made mistakes; he just made a mistake that again, because it was seven six again, eight it was eight six and seven five were the counts of the of the tiebreakers so it's mm-hmm. not like he got whitewashed in the, in the tiebreaker but again just not enough for him to be able to uh get over the uh get over the hump well i'm gonna i'm gonna add some additional color to the whole um faa commentary here mm-hmm. i was watching him 
And, and you know, to be very honest with you, there is something missing mm. in FAA's game for me. Like his game does not add up to the sum of all of his parts for me. You know, if you if you look at his game stroke by stroke, you're like, oh, he has a good forehand, he has a good backhand, he has a pretty good serve. I mean, he's athletic, he's fast. I mean, he has all the attributes right. that you want a player to have, but but he's lacking the glue mm-hmm. to put mm-hmm. it all together for me. And there's nothing in his game that I see that makes me say, what isn't an opponent afraid of? Right. Like, what do they have to stay away from? with FAA. Mm -hmm. And I almost, you know, I know y'all might get on me for this, but I almost, (laughs) I almost found myself rooting on FAA to lose because I feel like what happens sometimes with players, especially younger players, they can have gaps in their game that end up being not addressed due to the level of success that they've had with the gaps. And and although we've been on FAA about not winning a title, it's been a great achievement that he's in the top 20 and he's made it to seven finals. Mm -hmm. And so sometimes I think you need to kind of really start losing before it makes you go back to your roots and say, okay, what's wrong here? You know, what am I not doing? And I just feel like when I watch FAA play, he just, there's a soul missing in his game that I don't feel, like even even in comparison to like a Shapovalov. Hmm. Like, I feel like I, I see more of a, um, you know, he's much more aggressive. He, has, he tends to have much more of a game plan. Uh, he tends to, you know, I feel more confident, confident about how Shapovalov goes after a match. Okay. Whereas FAA, I think he's in there and he hits these beautiful strokes and he runs. I I just don't know that being fast and running around the court real well is enough to pull out, you know, some of these bigger matches. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I I get I get your perspective on it for sure. I think that there are some areas that he still has to kind of kind of grow up if you will, on just a little bit more diversity. I think he definitely needs to improve his net game. That's for sure. Because I, I've seen too many times where he gets into the net and it just doesn't look like he's quite comfortable there. Mm-hmm. Um, so I know that there's definitely some work um, that he needs to put in there. I mean, I, 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 you know, I love Felix. I love, uh, you know, all of the different aspects about him. Again, I think I pointed out that I still feel like his backhand, even though, you know, he hits it pretty well. I don't know that directionally he knows where he's going with it from time to time. <laughs> I mean, it's, it's just seriously, because when I see him hit it, it's just sort of like he's just hitting it. I don't know that I've ever seen him, like, aggressively try and go, like, down the line or, like, he's really in control of that shot. It's more or less like he's just reacting, whereas right. he always will run around and try and hit a forehand, and you always feel like he knows what he, what he, what he is at least intending to do um, on the forehand side. Um, the serve is still a little bit suspect. I know it's improved, but again, those, you know, the double faults still come here and there. So I just, I just feel like it's him tidying things up a little bit. Um, you know, I'm not as down on him, I guess, <laughs> as, as you were saying, but at the same time, I, I, I absolutely agree with what, what you're saying for sure is that there, there's got to be more development. And to be honest with you, I, I'm going to put Shapovalov in that, in that same category because I looked at his matches that he played. And if I'm being honest with you, I just, I wasn't, I wasn't that impressed. I just didn't feel like he, he, he just seemed a little bit, I, I don't know if you want to just say, I don't want to say too emotional, but that whole he his toss was all over the place with that match against Ivashka. and um i feel like he was lucky just to get out of that match now mind you he did lose to 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 Hubie. um but still i you know he i just didn't feel like he looked very good uh in this tournament and maybe this is just a tournament thing but um but yeah man i it, yeah i don't know so the canadians got some work to do even though milos uh has been kind of 
putting it on some folks, though. <laughs> right. Because, you know, when I look at players, I, I look at them in terms of their potential, right? Yeah and, yeah. and just right now, I guess my point with FAA is, you know, I don't look at FAA as a potential world number one right now. I look I at agree. him. I look at him as somebody that at best may crack the top 10 at some point in his career, have a great career, will make a lot of money. You know, mm-hmm, I mean, mm-hmm. nothing to be ashamed of, but, you know, I don't put him in that category of player yet because as a reminder, he's still young. Right. Um, Just 20. I but believe. I, yeah. But I don't put him in that category of player right now that I'm looking at those group of players who will be taking the spot of the big three. I, it's I, I still have him there to be honest with you I still I still have him there like I said he, he just needs to he's got a lot more developing that yeah, he, he, I, yeah for me I don't see him there with this game if he right. develops there it, you, you know go. but that but that's but that's true for a lot of players so yeah, it's gonna exactly be, it's gonna be interesting to see you know who does that now Isner even though he took him out he now gets to face in the round of 16, the person who we knew was going to be there, <laughs> right. um, RBA. And RBA got a little help along the way because he got a walkover from Lloyd Harris, who, you know, had been, you know, he was a finalist the week before in Dubai. Mm-hmm. Uh, and, and that could have been a potential upset. But how do you think Isner is going to do against RBA? Yeah, see, and to me, RBA has what I think Felix is missing. So he's going to get more balls in play. I think his flat ground strokes are going to bother John because they stay low and he's got to get that big body down in order to get some of them ground strokes. So um, I I think this is going to be a really, really tough match. I think it will go three. But in truth, if if, if I'm being honest with you, I have a feeling John's going to win this match, though. (laughs) <laughs> okay. As weird as that sounds, I don't know why, but I feel like he's going to win this match. I feel like because again, he's done well in Miami. I think he's seeing that there, you know, like I said, Taylor Fritz is about to be up on his back. Peter, yeah, not Peter Quarter, <laughs> Savvy Quarter, Sebastian Quarter is has is showing himself very well in this tournament, and so I think he's gonna he's gonna gear up to really try and hold on to that, you know, number one American title, if you will. Um, uh, as as long as he can, so I, I kind of see that being his motivation or his fire to 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 get him through that match. And who knows, he may hell, he may he may be the one that ends up uh, facing either Rublev or Center. Um, oh wait a minute, no no no, yeah, I'm, about oh, to say, I'm sorry, he had to play Medvedev. I'm he sorry, Medvedev, yeah, and, scratch and, that. No, no he, uh, he'll be gone. He'll yeah, be that's gone. the end of the story. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> So, so let's go down to that next section. So yeah. I, I was very happy to see that the Finnish player, uh, Ruzavori, took out Alexander Zarev. Yeah, yeah. That was uh that was a uh, well I mean but you know everybody takes their turn on Sasha so um, <laughs> if you go if you gonna get a win over someone in the top ten he is the one to get it against and I think it was kind of like you know I think it's what actually happened to a lot of those guys who who did fare very well in the previous tournaments so you had you know Sasha who won against C C Paz even though C C Paz still um, still around I believe. And then, you know, mm-hmm. we we talked about Lloyd Harris, who played very well and had to unfortunately uh, do a walkover against Batista Good. And then, you know, and, and our our son, um, you know, went out today. So that was, you know, kind of disappointing. But, yeah, yeah, I think he just fell victim to, you know, just just being tired. But, you know, I'm not a big fan of Sasha, so it wasn't didn't hurt my feelings to see him gone. No. Uh, <laughs> and and he to Rusevori because he's yeah. an up-and-comer. I mean, yeah. yeah, and he also took out Miguel Emer, who took out, speaking of, of the hot boys, right. he took out Basilashvili, yep. who, you know, just won the tournament in Doha. Right, exactly. So we thought he was going to come in all hot, and uh, Brother Man Emer... Yeah. Uh, put the Swedish fish on him <laughs> and and took him out in three sets, but uh, he then lost to Rusevori. Now, Rusevori will be playing, now this is where you were talking about a few minutes ago, uh, Yannick Sinner, mm-hmm. who uh, had a good win over Hatchinoff. And you know what? Hatchinoff, to me, <laughs> I'm telling you what, he's another one of these ones that he started off kind of good, but I think he's a career top 20 guy. I don't yeah. I don't know that I see 
I mean, well, we've already said Hatchinov is not going to be in the top three Russians, mm-mm, uh, mm-mm. let alone. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. No, Aslan's going to take his spot very, very quickly. I, I, I just, I see the the three, of course, being, of course, of course, Aslan, Rublev, and Medvedev. Um, Karen is just, I don't know. He's just got some things that, like you were talking about with Felix, I, I feel the same way about him. I feel like there's certain little aspects about his game that are going to inhibit him from being a consistent uh, top 10 player, at right. least based on what I'm seeing right now. So I'm assuming, though, that you're picking Sinner over Rusev. Yeah, yeah. I think because Sinner, again, was struggling to, you know, with, with Hatchinoff, uh, you know, and, uh, you know, he got 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 that uh, got out of that tiebreaker and was like, OK, I, I can I can take this now. So um, I, I feel pretty confident that he's and they're both young. They're both young. Who knows? They probably face each other in junior. So they ain't, they won't be afraid of one another. So I but I do think center will will take out Rusevori in that matchup. OK, and then in the the last section of the top half, we had mm-hmm. we had all kind of crazy stuff going on. In there right. Because, you had Cam Norrie, who quietly is having a very good 2021. Right. Uh, uh, took out Dimitrov, and then he loses uh, to Taylor Fritz when Taylor Fritz just barely, you know, uh, well, not barely. He he gave two whole biscuits to yeah, uh, Garon. Yeah, yeah, he was. But, uh, <laughs> but <laughs> Garon took out his boy. Yeah, uh, Tommy Paul. Exactly. So that was a great win for Giron to be able to take out Tommy Paul, who, like you were saying, has had a relatively good 2021 thus far. So for him to be able to take out Tommy and then, you know, and then get to that second round of a, of a master series, that's, that's impressive. But yeah, Taylor Fritz was like, nah, son, you better, you better go ahead with these no biscuits and get out of the way. <laughs> <laughs> and then you had Duckworth. Mm-hmm. Who took out Gofan six three six one like it wasn't I, nothing right? And then uh, went out four and four to Bublik. Yeah, Bublik was like, nah, I, I got tricks. <laughs> you might have had something for uh, Gofan, but you ain't you ain't ready for this. So, so how so how do you see that Fritz Gofan matchup going? Um, well, Fritz Bublik, yeah, it's Fritz. I mean, Fritz, uh, you Bublik, know, yeah, yeah, no, no, it's all good. Uh, I, you know, again, I think. I think Taylor's finding a little bit of fire right now. And um, it's definitely going to be, uh, um, you know, a lot of power in that match because Bublik pr- possesses a lot of power, as does Taylor. Um, but I just feel like Taylor's probably going to come with a little bit more of a game plan. And, mm-hmm. you know, Bublik always plays it He's all over the place. He all right. over the place, exactly. So I, I just feel like I'm, I'm giving the edge to Taylor um, uh, in that in this one actually. So I'm, I'm thinking it's going to be Sinner against uh, uh, Taylor in that and, other quarter. And you know what the funny thing is? Mm-hmm. The way I see that match is I see that that match is completely up to how Bublik plays. Agree, agree. Um, yep. If yep. Bublik comes out and he's doing all that magician stuff mm-hmm. he does, mm-hmm. he could totally give Fritz no rhythm. And win, but then there's the other side of Bublik, right? Where he may take two breadsticks and be on his way. <laughs> exactly, <So, clears throat> just be hitting out on stuff, and then it be hitting folks in the stands. So you never know what you're gonna get with him. Exactly. So um, that that's that's very interesting. So let's move to the bottom half of yeah. the draw with the men, and then we had, you know, Schwartzman came through like he was supposed to, and we yep. we didn't think he was going to have any problems. But like you referred to a few mo- moments ago, today, Korda took out Karatsev, 6-3, six, 6-love. Six mm-hmm. and, and, um, and let me just say this about Karatsev. Yeah. Um, I watched that match, and and don't get me wrong, I don't I don't mean to disrespect Korda because Korda is, I, I honestly believe Korda probably in the next year will become the top American player. Right. on the men's side and he's just he's just got a head of steam that's just building and it was a great win for him but i watched that match today and to me karatsev looked tired exactly and and so i had to think back and remember so karatsev qualified for the australian open mm-hmm. he made it all the way to the semifinals yep then he played the next week where he ended up losing in three sets to dominic team mm-hmm. then he played in um uh, and uh, Dubai, right, where he went all the way through and won the title. Yep. And this was the third week in a row after the Australian Open 
that he was playing. And don't get me wrong, I get it. He was hot guy. You ride it while it's hot or whatever. Right. But he's been playing for five weeks in a row now. Mm-hmm. Exactly. And, and it's it's probably and he's done well. So he should take a well deserved rest and and start to get himself ready for the clay. Uh, but like I said, not taking anything away from quarter, but I I just really think you know, Krasov needed to go sit down somewhere. <laughs> exactly. And I, brother, I agree with you 100%. Um, I th- and like I said, that's, I feel like that's what happened with a lot of the players that played, you know, last week and went and advanced. And, and like you said, Krasov has just been playing and, and, and rightfully so, because I mean, again, you don't, you know, going into the year, you wouldn't think that you'd be on this win streak. So that's probably just how he typically scheduled because you would think that, you know, you wouldn't go that far. You wouldn't advance that far. So you go to the next tournament. But he's been winning, and he's been winning a lot. (laughs) So it's kind of like, you know, they they had that same thing with Dominique Team when he was initially coming up. Like, he played too much. And it's like, well, he wasn't anticipating he was going to win so much. And I think that that's just what happened with Aslan. And like you said, I watched that match as well. Brother was just tired. He was just like, I'm just tired, y'all. Right, right. Um, Even and... after the handshake, he just looked like, I'm ready for the court. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> He's like, I'm ready for a sandwich, y'all. <laughs> I need to get out the way. So, um, what, so what do you think uh, is going to happen there in that matchup between Schwartzman and Quarter? I tell you what, brother, I'm putting my money on quarter. I really am. Mm-hmm. I think he's got the hot hand right now, and I actually see him taking out uh, um, Diego. As, and I hate saying that because I feel bad for my boy Diego because that's my dude. I, I really like Diego Schwartzman. But when it comes to a bigger player, I just feel like they can blow him off of a hard court. And right. I think quarter possesses that type of power that he's just literally like how, how he was against uh, Karatsev. In the, uh, what was it? Was it? No, not the Australian Open. Where did he beat him at? Maybe it was Dubai. French. Oh, it was. No, where, where, who beat who? Where Karatsev beat uh, Schwartzman. Oh, at the Australian. Yeah, it was at the Australian. Yeah, remember how he just kind of <laughs> kind of stole up on him? Like, I'm, this my seating. This ain't your seating. And right. Diego was like, what is happening here? I think that's unfortunately going to be the case for him as well with Korda. I think Korda is going to basically push him around. And I think he's playing well enough that he's going to be able to control the rallies and he's going to make it through. Gotcha. Yeah. So in the next section, now, I was surprised Ooh. by this. Chillich, I, I, look, I had Chillich on retirement watch. <laughs> right? I really, really did. <laughs> and he beat Coria in the first round. Then he got a hold of Grin and beat him. And then I was really surprised that he beat Musetti. Yeah, but but you know, Musetti has played a lot of tennis as well, and mm-hmm. you know he's he you know he's a young cat, so he probably looks up to Chilich like, oh, it's a Grand Slam champion, mind you. Uh, Chilich was the only one to have that that you know that dis- uh, distinguishing characteristic, if you will, coming into this tournament. He was the only one in the men's draw that owned a Grand Slam title. Yep. So, yeah. you know, so, you know, he, who knows? He may have been feeling, feeling himself on, on that, just, you know, having that distinction. But but in truth, I mean, really, has he really beaten anyone? No, not really. Because <laughs> Coria, I mean, let's just be, let's call it what it is. Coria, no. Garim, you know, Garim's cool and everything, but his surface is clay. So, and it's right. in clay. So, right. so Chillis was like, move. And, and, and Musetti, you know, Musetti, 17 or 18, so he's young. So he was like, he was like this move. I, I, no, I got plans. Now, mind you, this next round, though, <laughs> he going to come to Jesus. I'm going to tell you right now. <laughs> yes, sir. Come to Jesus. Because what? Rublev is like, no way, son. <laughs> yeah, Rublev has lost a total of six games so far. We were happy to see him give that uh, bread stick and whole biscuit to Tennis Sangren. <laughs> and then he, he told Fuchovic there's a little more left for you, gave him a whole biscuit and a bread stick. And I just got a feeling that Chilich is going to be served something to eat too. I think so, bro. I think so. I think he's got his, his oven mitts out and he's got his little apron on and he's like, I'm about to cook. I'm cooking. I'm, I'm baking right now. The, so. you, 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 know, you know when you, you're outside of Krispy Kreme and the, <laughs> the, the hot donut sign is lit? <laughs> right? <laughs> you know what? It's, it's lit right now. It's lit, know? bro. Bro, it's lit. Yeah, so Rublev should take that match with Chillage and it would be nice to see a Rublev uh, qu- uh, quarter quarterfinal. 
That would that would be interesting. I would like to see that matchup. That'd be cool. Now, in the next section, you know, it went to form until today. I was surprised. Right. I thought Shapovalov was going to take out Herkic. Yeah, like I told you, bro, that match before with Ivashka, he looked vulnerable, in my uh-huh. opinion. Just the toss was all over the place. I think I felt his emotions were all over the place. Um, and I like Shapovalov. I like him a lot. But I just he just didn't look like he was settled. And um, and and yeah, for him to barely kind of get out of that match, um, I just felt like yeah, Hubie Hubie's not the one to be playing around with. You you know you got to be on your game if you're gonna get him, and he was not. Well, Herkic now gets Rayanich, which is a right. surprise to me because I would have thought Umber was gonna win that match. Yeah, you would have thought with the lefty swing and everything going into Rayanich's backhand, but I tell you what, Rayanich is. Uh, he, when he catches fire, you you got to watch out for him because he 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 can smack some folk around. He's got some stupid power and uh, that serve and that forehand. He's got that combo mastered. So when he's on, he is definitely uh, tough to beat. So I actually think he's going to get past Hubie as well. Okay, okay. Mm-hmm. Well, he always has one or two of these runs a year, so I guess why, why not? <laughs> why not now? now? Exactly. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> exactly. Uh-huh. And so then we have, in the last section, we have Sonego. And, mm-hmm. you know, okay. You know, it, it was a weaker section. Demon Yard lost early, but, mm, you know. Yeah. Yeah, I don't think that we were really calling out really anyone. I think the matchup that we were looking at was at CC Pass Nishikori, and apparently CC Pass has gotten through that one. Uh, but, but with a breadstick in the third set. Right. See, there you go. Yeah. So Nishikor got a little, little tired, but again, good to see his resurgence. Good to see him back out there playing some good ball. Really like K. Um, but yeah, CC Pass. I feel like he'll he'll take out Sonego. I feel like he's going to be uh, be in that uh, that other quarter. So at the end of the day, we're still thinking Medvedev CC Pass final. Still thinking it. Yep. Yep. And Medvedev champion. Yes. All righty. So let's go ahead and move over to the women who we are almost in the final eight. Right. Uh, we have two matches going on right now. Um, and But let's go ahead and start at the top of the draw where mm-hmm. we have uh, Ash. I said I'm number one still. <laughs> Barty, um, who got up on Azarenka and was like, I heard y'all been talking about me. Right. Y'all been talking about I got this number one ranking and it should go to Osaka. <laughs> I'm going to show y'all why this number one is by my name right now. Exactly. So, um, there was a whole lot of feeding in that match. 6-1, 1-6, six, 6-2. Six, six, right? I mean, Brent's dissing the whole biscuit's flying. I was like, <laughs> what are y'all doing, right? <laughs> but it was, but honestly, it was a good match though. I was watching it out the corner of my good eye, and mm. uh, it was it was really good. And you're right, Ash was just like, "Listen, y'all gonna quit disrespecting me." Um, <laughs> right. You know, you put some respect on my game and my name because I have this number one, and it, it and ain't by luck. I play. Right. I do know how to play. And yeah, I was impressed. That was a very very solid victory against Vika because Vika was playing good ball. I mean, it she wasn't was. like she was hurt. Wasn't like anything was going on with her. She just got beat. It wasn't like got it was too cold day. for her. <laughs> I know, right? It's too yeah. cold. We can be playing. So, right? so <sighs> waiting for Barty is one of the hottest players on the tour still, Sabalenka, mm-hmm. who took care of uh, Vondra Sova like she was supposed to with a bread stick and a whole biscuit herself. <laughs> right? She was like, now listen, <laughs> you didn't came far enough, Lefty. <laughs> Bye. <laughs> you can do all you want against Belinda Benches, but you ain't bringing that game to me. No. Right. And uh, and I am looking forward to that Sabalenka Barty matchup. That's going to be good, bro. Well, who, who are you calling? You know... <sighs> Only because I think Barty's got that little chip on her shoulder. I think she's like, listen, I'm I'm trying to meet Naomi in this final so that right. we can get this thing cleared up. I really believe that that is her mindset. And so I think she's going to end up slicing and dicing Sabalenka because, you know, Sabalenka's going to have to be on. And, and, and mind you, if she is on, she will take out Ash because I do feel like it's in her hands because she just has so much power and she's so aggressive. Right. But at the same time, if she's just slightly off, she she ain't gonna beat Ash because Ash is going to bring the slice and the dice and the forehand. And she, yeah, I, I I'm calling Ash. Who are you calling on that one, bro? 
Um, gosh, that could go either way. It, it's it's like you said. It it honestly depends on Sabalenka, right? Right. And um, I, I I can't pick all, but I I am gonna co-sign on the idea that we need a Barty Osaka final okay. because. You know, Barty's clear, clear up. Yeah, Barty's number one in the rankings. I think Osaka is number one in everybody's mind. And yep. so we need to see them play yep. and, and and battle it out. And, now, and what better a, a stage than a 1,000? I mean, to me, yeah. if it can't be a Grand Slam, hey, it's a 1,000. Get it. Get it, ladies. Get yeah, it. Yeah, that'll be good. <laughs> now, still in the top half, you know, surprisingly, and I'm disappointed here, we have Sevastova, mm-hmm. who... who had a great win over a resurgent Kanju. Ooh, right? Kanju was like, y'all better recognize that I still got my game. Yeah, because I she... followed that young lady and I used to absolutely love her. Wondered what happened to her. I didn't realize that she had been injured, but yeah, man. Woo. Yeah, I mean, I wasn't that impressed when she beat Keys because I didn't didn't do that as <laughs> such a big feat. But when she took out Sriatek, <laughs> right? No oh, biscuit. Okay. Yeah, I said, wow, that was a really good win and yeah. then also I, I must admit I was disappointed that golf went out to Sevastopol. Yeah, yes. I have to agree. 100%. Um, and I just... It was close. You it know, was tiebreaker, but... It was it, close. But, you know, I don't oh, know no, what's going wasn't. on. I'm, I'm sorry. I was looking at the wrong match. No, she beat her two and three. That's right. Well, but see, but here's the thing. I keep looking... Well, well no, but remember, golf... Um, won the first set six one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, I'm I'm sorry. I should have said that. Yeah, she 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 spanked her up that first set, but then lost two and three in the second. Right. Set. Yeah. But you know, I just kind of feel like these people that that are coming out of the Murata Glute camp, they have these like, you know, CC Pass has this gap with the backhand. Right. Coco Golf has got this gap with the forehand. Right. You know, it's it's like. You know, that forehand, I, and I'm just going to talk about it with golf, the way I talk about the, the backhand with CC Paz. Mm-hmm. When things get tight, players yep. know that's where you go, and that's where they're finding opportunities. And, you know, we know Coco's only 17, so, you know, this is no way any kind of statement on her ultimate career, but right. they need to tighten that up sooner than later. Correct. If they Absolutely. need to, re- if she needs to take some L's now because they're retooling that forehand, mm-hmm. now is the time to do that. Yeah. Um, let's not get caught up like we said with FAA with have having had success. Right. You know that we're not gonna because that's not gonna that's not gonna do it for her against the top ladies. Right. All, right. You know. So um, and, and then what really had me frustrated was. When I saw in the next round, Halep withdrew. Yeah, withdrew. So that yeah. would have moved golf into the very next round where she would have played Kanju. Um, so, you know, Sevastova's there. I, You know, if I sound kind of right. funny, I've just never been a big Sevastova fan personally. No, so, I mean, uh, yeah, so, she I, but yeah, she, yeah. Shouldn't be, she shouldn't be in the quarters of Miami Open. But. No, no. But, <laughs> but the other surprise was that Svitolina is going to be the person that she's playing because I didn't think Svitolina was going to get past Shelby Rogers. Mm-hmm. And then I questioned whether she was going to get past Alexandrova. Right. And then I really didn't think she was going to get past Kvitova today. Mm-hmm. And here she is. She she always do this, man. And Svit- Svitolina, it always just confuses me because when you think she's going to go out, she wins. And then when you think she's going to win or when she's supposed to win, she loses. So I just never know what to expect with her. She, I almost put her in the same court as, uh, as Petra Martic. She always just sort of there, <laughs> but I, she, she just confuses me. So right. I, I, I don't know. But yeah, I, you know, and, and mind you, you would think that, hey, she got Sevastova, great opportunity to make it to the semis of a thousand. Of course she should be, she should win. She probably going to lose. I mean, I just, I, I seriously, I mean, right. I, I just, I don't know what to expect from some, from Svitolina at times. So yeah, I don't even know how to call that, that match against her and Sevastova. Don't even know. Well, I think we probably can agree though, that whoever wins between Barty and Sabalenka yeah. will go to the final. They'll go to the final. Yeah, for sure. All Definitely right. believe in that. Now let's take a look at the bottom half now. Yeah. 
Yes. There are still matches going on. So if you've got your TV on right now, uh, Bianca Andrescu is playing Muguruza uh, right now. They just started. Uh, they're on serve right now. So, you know, you can that one. I'm DVR. Yeah, I'm DVR okay. in that one because I'm going to watch that as soon as we get done with all this. Yeah, I'm going right to my TV and watching that rescue of Mugu because I want that. I want to see that matchup. Right. So that's going to be a good one. Yeah. And then we have uh, the winner of that will face the winner of Ans Jabor and Cerebus uh, Tormo. And right. they just went into the third set. Uh, Cerebus Tormo, I think, won the first set 6 4. But uh, Jabur just gave her a, a bagel in the second set. <laughs> so. Gotcha. Uh, I would so. expect Owens to be able to get through that. Cerebus Tormo is very similar to, again, Petra Martic. Her, her name just keeps popping up. But when I see her game, I'm just like, how are, how are you doing this? Um, it, it just, <laughs> it, I don't know. Not to bust on it. But, yeah, it just maybe I just need to really watch her, a match of hers. And, and maybe I can better appreciate what she's bringing to the court. But, yeah, I don't know. She took out Rabakina. I, I claim her. She's still, yeah, she's still yeah. on my JV squad. Right, And, right. Um, you know, the fact she got up on her in three sets, I was just like, how does Saripa's Tormo get up on Rabakina? Right. What is that? Right. So, I, she confuses me. Anyway. Well, let's go to the bottom half yeah. of the bottom section, which they are finished. Mm-hmm. And the, the the first player there we have is Maria Sakari, who mm-hmm. um, took out Pagula in a third set tiebreaker. That was a battle, dude. That was a battle. They were going back and forth. They was going head to head. They was each throwing punches, and, and that was a great match. I, I, I was watching that before we got started, and uh, yeah, yeah, really uh, really good stuff. Well, I tell you who about tired of Pagula, and that would be <laughs> Carolina Pliskova, <laughs> right? who, who took the loss from her uh, for the third time in a this row. season, yeah, exactly. She like, ain't nobody scared of your game. She's like, bring, bring that game all day, every day, because I'm going to get that what W. Right. <laughs> so I'm telling you what, uh, Pagula is just climbing up yeah. the rankings. Yes. Yeah, good on her. Because, just so happy for her. Because I'm telling you, who need, who need to be looking over their shoulder is Jen Brady, because Jen is still doing this, you know, she. you talk about right. Cerebus Tormo beating Rabakina, you know, <laughs> She beat Jim Brady first. I know, right? Yeah, but Jim Brady was cramping though, so she got she cramped up. So that that's just a tough one, you know. Well, it's been a pattern. <laughs> it, for it's true. A while. I, you're right. You're right. <laughs> <Yeah>. Uh huh. <laughs> so you know, you are I, right. We we you know, and we really want to see some consistency <laughs> out of her. Um, right. You know, do it two times in a row. Well, anyway, Sakari, who is, you know, one of our favorites, mm-hmm. will now be playing uh, the probably who's number one in most people's minds right now, name, Naomi Osaka, right. who, you know, took care of Elise Mertens like she was supposed to, three and three, regular mm-hmm. day at the office. Exactly, which was really good after, you know, having that walkover against Stajanovic. So, mm-hmm. you know, good that, you know, you know, because you don't want to get too far out of form. So for her to be able to come back and win like that, that's very, that bodes very well, bodes in her favor as it relates to this next, next matchup. So, yeah, I'm definitely picking Osaka over Sakari for sure. So, you know, I'm assuming if Barty doesn't make it to the finals, we're assuming it's because she lost to Sabalenka. Right. Um, if Osaka were to not make the finals, who would that be because of? Would it be because of Sakri? Would it be potentially because of Muguruza or Bianca? Um, well, you, it, it, it's funny that you, you, you say those names, but the name that actually came to my mind uh, was Ons Jabour. <laughs> and, the, and, and, and the reason she did, the reason was... I I kind of put her in that same category as Medvedev. Did you see the end of her match where she was like couldn't even leave the court? Um uh, oh, yeah, against mm-hmm. Yeah, she right. she was like, you know, it was tough and 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 she barely got through that match against Badosa. And um and just the fact that she made it through that match and I feel like 
I always feel like when a player is like almost about to lose, you know what I mean? They just get this newfound like, well, you know, hey, I was going out anyway, so I might as well play carefree. carefree. So I right. watch out for Ons. I actually feel like she she might have something for the winner of that Mugu uh, <laughs> dress. Oh, okay. okay. Um, well, that's if she gets through Serena's Tomo because you told me they're in the third set now, right? Yeah, right. Yeah, so she needs to handle up on that match. But at the same time, I, you know, just watch out for her. Oh, and actually she's already down a break. Oh, just, to, to, to read this homo. <laughs> <laughs> He's like, Isaac, shut up. You ain't got no. <laughs> He's like, please. <laughs> well, regardless, though, it's going to be some good matchups down there, bro. Because, I mean, that just, that yeah, they've got a lot of, of, of really, uh, again, good names left. So if it's Naomi against Sakri and then whoever wins that match, because I still love Sakri as well. Um, right. To play, you know, either Andrescu or Muguruza or Jabor. Now, again, I, I, you know, if Sarir, and who, watch, Sarir Tomo will probably. Be the one there. <laughs> well, like, how you do that? <laughs> right. I, well, I'm really hoping it's Bardi Osaka. That's the yeah. that's the final I really want to see. Exactly. I'm with you, partner. I'm yeah. with you. <laughs> so. Well, you know, you know, to our, our listeners out there, you know, that brings us up to date, you know, where we're at with the the Miami Open. And, you know, we'll, we'll definitely be back next Monday to talk about, you know, the final results. And we'll be starting to prepare for the Charleston mm-hmm. uh, tournament uh, for for the women. And they're going to have a pretty good lineup there. Any final words you have to the listeners, uh you know, about, you know, going into the finals this weekend? No, no, just to, you know, always want to give a shout out. So um, on the double side, shout out to, to um, uh, uh, what's it called? Makoko. Yes. Um, Cause they still, they're still doing their thing. And, 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 and shout out to Asia Muhammad and Pagula. They still yes. up in the, uh, up in the double. So we always want to support our sisters in the double. So. Yeah. Yeah. That's a surprise. Cause you know, Demi Shore. And uh, Nicole Melikar mm-hmm. lost to uh, Pagula yeah, and Mohamed. Yeah. yeah. And then um, Mikoko took out a strong team with Siniakova and Krashikova. Exactly. Exactly. So they both had really strong wins. So yeah, I'll be I'll be keeping an eye out on them for 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 real. Mm-hmm. And you know, and for you listeners. Keep an eye out for for Locker Room. If you're already on an Apple product, you know you can go to the Apple Store and download it and participate in these live recordings that we're having. For those of you that are on Android, we know that Locker Room just recently started testing on Android, so it won't be long now. Uh, (laughs) You'll be able to join us hopefully real soon on Locker Room, but this is your place to come and have social conversation about the world of sports. So, Isaac, um, we're going to go ahead and, and end this and head over to IG because for the last couple of weeks, we, we've either been doing Locker Room or IG. <laughs> and we're going right. to get back to, to getting to both of them tonight. But to our listeners, thank you once again for listening, and we look forward to talking to you again next week. Uh, this has been your boy, Bryce. And this is your boy, Isaac. And we are Brothers on 10th. Everyone, be safe. <laughs>